Today, we're gonna dive into Google VO 3.1 to see if the new improved AI video generator is actually good. We're gonna try out some examples with the start and end frame. We're gonna check out the quality of the visuals and we're gonna try something out with the new ingredients feature. Now with 3.1, with the ingredients feature, you can add in three different images. So for example, you can add in an image of yourself, an image of your background and an image of any character or object that you want to include in your channel. Generation. For this example, we will be using OpenArt as this has all the AI video models and all the image models built inside of it. So let's see if we can cook up something with 3.1 or if we should use another model like Sora or Kling or any other model that's on the market right now. Now let me demonstrate how that works. So for example, if we go over to video right here, then we click on the models and here we can select VO3. And then you can select VO3.1 and here we have all of the different settings that we want to use in here. Alongside that, you can use all of these different models too. For example, Kling 2.5 or 1 2.5 or even Sora. Now for the ingredients feature, you actually want to go to element as here you can select VO3. Then you can add up to three different images. As you can see, I have these three images over here. If I drag those into OpenArt, then they're all all uploading. So I have this image of me, I have this image of a tiger, chimpanzee and a parrot and then I have this like background image where I want to be walking. Now then I give it my prompt. Keep in mind I will leave all the prompts that I've used in the description down below so you can get them for free and check out how I prompt my videos. Now for the settings I use audio on and then I do 1080p and now you simply hit create. Now that gave me this result right here. VO 3.1 puts me anywhere with anything I want. We have the parrot, we have the tiger. And here comes the chimpanzee. Honestly, this is quite good. I really love how it implements all the elements and puts them all together. Let me show you another example with the ingredients feature. This time it will be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm keeping that image of myself right here, but then I'm changing two images to this image of a suit and this background of a ship. So I'm gonna be on this ship that is like sinking. For the prompt right here, I'm doing a POV selfie video of me on a stormy ocean deck at night. Yeah. I don't know what was up with me when I came up with this idea, but honestly, let's check it out. So after generating for around three minutes, this is the result that I got. This new update is insane, but I am not sure how I ended up here. This new update is insane, but I am not sure how it's I It's pretty good. <laughs> My face is like perfectly lit out though. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't think like... This would be me if we we're actually in a storm like this. I would be the last person to grab my camera. But I think overall the audio is a lot better from VO3.1 than VO3. The only thing that I'm noticing is we still have a bit of morphing going around. Like here you can see like people appearing out of nowhere. I do like the dramatic switch where you see like the wave like it's about to slam in it. It almost reminds me of that interstellar scene where the wave is like crashing down on them. But with this new ingredients feature, I'm noticing it's good, but still it's a lot for the AI to handle and to make good. So like three ingredients is a lot. Let's try the same thing here, but this time we're using a different image of me and we're using an object instead of like another character or a outfit. So this time I got these three images, which is me as a different pose. I got this stitch stuffed animal and I got this like crazy outfit of myself. So let's change up the prompt again. And this time I'm saying use the image as exact character and lock in the identity with no alterations or style or drift. Preserve the skin tone. So I'm basically telling it to keep my face exactly consistent. Now then I have like a few other details about the outfit and the Lilo and Stitch pose. And then it made this video. The new VO 3.1 helps you put anything, anywhere, anytime. Honestly, this is pretty good. Like I love how when I'm talking, I even like do this thing with the like with the stuffed animal. I think this looks pretty realistic. I, I would love to hear your opinion in the comments down below. And keep in mind, like the image of my face is actually an AI generated image of my face. It's not the real me. So I think like this, this could work in real use cases. Moving on, we got start and end frame on VO3. And I just love this feature. I've been using this mostly on Kling 2.5. And now with 3.1, we can also add this and we can 
also add in some audio. And this is just amazing for making really cool and really realistic videos. For example, I'm a sucker for history. I love immersing myself in history, making videos about history. And now the entry level to make like YouTube videos about history topics is easier than ever. For example, I got these two frames right here. So I got someone that is like literally building the pyramids. He's moving blocks to the pyramids and then I ended up with this end frame of the pyramid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in this prompt right here, which is a close-up of an Egyptian worker's back pushing a stone cart and then the completed pyramid stands tall in the background. The camera executes a fast dolly forward movement zooming past the worker. It's almost like a drone shot I would say. So now I'm gonna use the settings 3.1 audio on 1080p. I don't know why you want to use 720 maybe to save credits but it doesn't really matter in this case and then aspect ratio 60 by 9 and then for the video mode you can switch between fast and normal. Normal is almost twice as expensive it will sometimes get you some better results. Of course fast is a lot faster so if speed is of the essence then use the fast mode. It will also save you a ton of credits. So after generating this is the result that I got. So that is quite insane. I dislike how like Vio has that like whoosh sound effect on every video they generate. Honestly, this shot is sick. Like that's the main thing that you need to make sure of that you have images that look somewhat consistent in style. Because if you want to have like a forward dolly transition like this, then you need to make sure that your start and end frame are similar to each other. And you also need to make sure that your prompt is correct, that you can actually achieve this like forward dolly zoom. Now, this could really be used in any video like this looks really cool. If, if someone makes a history channel and has like these kind of like AI generated shots, I would watch it. You can also do this start and end frame of yourself to make some cool transitions. For example, here I have a cool image of a luxurious forest resort. And then we have another one of me laying on the sunbed and I'm just talking into the camera. So if we combine those two shots together with my prompt, then you get something like this. Honestly, these new cinematic transitions are addictive. You can see because the start frame, the tanning bed was in a different position than I'm in. What you can see happening right here is that the bed is actually like turning around and then the camera slowly zooms in. And then you have me there talking and saying like, hey, these transitions are amazing. That's another way to use start and end frame. Honestly, the creativity is endless in this case. I would love to see whatever you create. I got two more examples here. This time I'm using a close-up shot of myself. Then the camera zooms out and then you have like this battle zone or war zone going on around me and you have to text VO 3.1 behind me. So with that, this is something that I made with that. You can even create cinematic visuals with this new start and end frame feature. Now I must say it's glitched a little bit right here and that's what happens when you don't have the consistency going on. So here you can see that the scene is changing. So we have like this part right here, which is transforming. So you need to make sure your video is consistent. You might wanna redo this and try this one again and then the results might be better. Lastly, remember when we did JSON prompting and where it makes like all of these different cool transformation style videos. Now with starting end frame you can do that too but with a little bit more control so for example i have this start frame of myself with a suitcase and then i have this second frame with the suitcase removed but with a bugatti now if i add in my prompt then i can animate it as in the suitcase is transforming into a bugatti take a look at this That's quite sick. Also, this gives you a lot more control. If you have, for example, your own custom logo, if you have your own custom product, you can use this way easier than it was before because I had a ton of different people literally asking me like, hey, how do I do these JSON prompt animations with my own logo? Now with the start and end frame, you have that control. So you can literally show like, this is the start frame, this is the end frame, and then have it do the animation for you. Okay, let's switch it up a bit because I am curious now, like how does this 
this stack up against a tool like Sora 2. So what I did is inside of OpenArt, I played around with both of these features. So we have VO 3.1 and we have, of course, we have Sora 2. Now with Sora, you can only input like one start frame and that's it. But I have this image of this product here and I have this prompt and I want to make a video where a woman is like holding that product and then she's saying something like, I've been using this face cream for just a week and my skin has never felt so soft and glowing. You have to try it. And let's see if we can make good looking UGC ads with both of these and which one is actually the best. Let's compare this starting off with VO 3.1. I've been using this face cream for just a week and my skin has never felt so soft and glowing. You have to try it. Honestly, the, the person looks pretty good and the hand movements looks realistic. The only thing that keeps bothering me with the VO3 voices is it has something to it. It sounds like a bit of like muffled or something. Um, that gives it off as like an AI. And until they fix that issue, I think you can still tell this would be AI generated. But let's take a look at it again. I've been using this face cream for just a week and my skin has never felt so soft and glowing. It's very accurate. Even the blinking, the touching of her face. She is glowing, <laughs> but like AI is always glowing. But yeah, it is quite good. Let's now compare this with Sora 2. So here I have the same thing with Sora 2. I put in that image. The only thing is as the start frame, we have that image for some reason. So I didn't even generate the women. So we have like a different women, of course. So let's take a look. I've been using this face cream for just a week and my skin has never felt so soft and glowing. You have to try it. And it so with this one, I feel like there's a little bit more emotion in her voice and in her like facial features. It still is not perfect, but it is pretty good. Like it is pretty good. So for UGC ads, it's still between Sora 2 and with VO 3.1. I must say though, currently it is very hard to make images of people using Sora 2 because if you input a picture of a person, sometimes it doesn't allow you to generate that. So leaving this up to imagination works well. That's exactly what I did. We only put in like the product as the image there. But overall with 3.1, you might have a little bit more control. It's a bit of a draw there. I, I'm curious to know in the comments which one you prefer the most. Next up, I have this image of this robot walking into the sunset and the robot unfortunately is dying. Like this clanker is on his final stretch. His battery is nearly dead and he's dropping down. So let's see what VO 3.1 made of this. How is he laying down? Like, it almost looks like he's humping the sand. Like, what's going on there? Ah, this one is slightly disappointing. I, I had higher hopes of 3.1. Maybe with another generation, it might have looked better. I, I've, I've looked like in behind the scenes of people that are generating videos with AI and they generate a ton of different variations because luck is still involved. But let's see if Sora 2 was lucky. This is the Sora 2 generation. Both of these examples were not great. Sorry, that's that, that's probably my thought. Like I, I might have made it too difficult of a prompt to follow. So this is like, in my opinion, Sora 2 might be better here, but I still don't find this like shot that good. Okay, next up, I have this pirate ship that is sinking. It's, it's going down in the storm and we're capturing like fast frantic cuts with a wide shot showing the entire deck tilting, handheld mid shots, pirates slipping off, grabbing barrels, close ups. We want to have all the crazy movements in here. All the crazy shots because that's what i want to have the ai to do now we're starting off with vo 3.1 abandoned ship And that's, this is like my, my kind of like job. I, I'm trying to break the AI here. And I think I've made a good job because this shot just doesn't work quite well for VO 3.1. Like all of a sudden this explodes. I don't know how. Then here a few men appear out of nowhere. Like it just glitches. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he just wants to go home. <laughs> Same dude. So yeah, that's not good. Let's see Sora. I mean, that's that's a lot better. Like the first few seconds were a lot better until 
this like glitch here. But let me just take a look at that cannon though. They're shooting at their own deck. <laughs> These must have been the dumbest pirates ever. I do like the audio of this one. It does have more of a dramatic feel, but still, that's the limitation that it might happen. And that's the thing that I want to give you. Don't try to do these crazy, like really a lot of different scenes all at once happening in one frame because the AI will be overwhelmed. As you can see, both of these tools are great tools, but they were a bit overwhelmed. If we make it a lot easier, then it's a lot easier for the AI also to give you exactly what you want to see. So that's everything you need to know about Google VO 3.1. Now, I get a lot of questions about which tool you actually need to use. And I've done countless of comparison videos. I will put them on the screen right now because these models have been released like crazy if i were to just tell you which model i'm using the most right now is it is cling 2.5 because it's super cheap it is pretty good i also still use cling 2.1 for the start and end frame i use google vo 3.1 also for the start and end frame and for some other generations now then i use sora 2 a lot 1 2.5 if you want to have stuff that is more uncensored in a sense and i know not the dirty stuff just like in general you can make anything you want with 1 2.5 and then minimax halo 0 2 I believe they're just around to come out with a new version. So that's it for this video. I will leave a comparison video on the screen right now. Check that out. And if you want to make these cool generations yourself, then use the link in the description down below to get a subscription to OpenArt.